All right, what is up? Happy Friday, folks. It's a little bit cloudy, but the weather's still good, so I hope you guys went outside and enjoyed the sun. I have not had a chance to, um, but that's okay. Uh, I know there's a ton of AI news coming out. Um, you know, a lot of this uh, foundational model stuff, being able to handle more than text, very cool things uh, coming in the future. All still using the same transformer architecture from 2017 so the underlying technology hasn't really changed we're just converting inputs into, into tensors vectors whatever you want to call them and processing those vectors so that we can do continuations and make predictions uh going forward i do have videos on that it's all the same technology but it is still very cool and very useful uh next they're going to probably do audio and uh the uh, i think the final goal will be able to say uh, i want a picture of a beautiful woman and you say that and it'll produce a picture of a beautiful woman that already exists um but uh instead of just producing a picture of a beautiful woman it'll uh um continue on and uh maybe you know write a story or something based on that picture and you know it'll just keep going from there uh in infinitum and you know maybe we can stick with the transformer architecture look at the underlying technology of a computer it's just ones and zeros we haven't been able to move on from that and i mean look what computers can do so maybe we don't need anything more i'm not really sure but uh, there's more information coming on that if you are interested in ai exclusive Exclusively, I do apologize. We are taking a small hiatus, focusing on assembly right now, but I will be doing uh, coding assembly with GPT, coding Java with GPT, trying to write test cases. That's coming in the future. I've just been kind of lazy recently and I've been swamped with school. So that's that. But let's get back into RARS. Today we'll be talking about procedures. Let's get to it. All right, so let's talk about procedures. We have a few programs that we would like to look at today. I've uploaded these this main link list and stack about a week ago. Uh, I don't know how much we'll be looking into it, but maybe just for reference, just to get some background uh, with these saving registers and loading registers that uh, mainly we'll just go through these notes here, take a look at this factorial program, which I live streamed and go from there. Basically, all we're doing is talking about basic unit of structured modular programming functions, subroutines, code blocks, whatever you want to call them. We're talking about code that is called by other code or calls other code or just a series of instructions. Let's get to it. All right. So in this factorial code, we, I guess, have three proceed, maybe four procedures, maybe five procedures. Maybe we have this small section here, this section here, this section here, and this section here, that's four. And then maybe the entire program is also a procedure. You know, there's no real set definition that uh, delineates one from another, I would say. But the main idea here is that in a given procedure, we are dealing with a certain set of registers and each procedure might reuse registers or they might use different registers, but we have a finite set of registers. So we want to make sure that the data that we're putting in registers and the data that we're loading out of registers is properly handled. And the way we do that is saving registers that we want to save the values of saving the values of registers that we want to load later onto the stack. So as it says, well, we want to be able to use arguments procedures can take arguments and return values and process information. So we, we want to be able to use arguments, save values and return to the memory location that called the procedure. I forgot to mention that as well. So here, this particular procedure, it uh, is going to handle these registers here, do some stuff. It's going to jump somewhere else and it's going to jump somewhere else yet again, two different locations. So we want to be able to know where this is, uh, save this value so that it properly returns and save another value so that it jumps to the right location. In addition to saving all of the values that uh, are getting handled uh, and processed and potentially uh, loading values that get passed to it that like what happens here, uh, some values get passed here. So that is already it's, you know, four different things, you know, we might be handling, we might, that might take three registers each, you know, it might be 12 registers for a single procedure minimum, maybe more, maybe less, but we only have 32. Uh, we're going to lose one for the zero register. You can't mess with that. The stack pointer, the global pointer, uh, the frame pointer, which I think is S zero. Uh, we can't mess with that. The program counter, we can't really mess with that either. So, you know, we're already down five and uh the some of these a zeros a ones s ones you know also are kind of traditionally used for other things the a zero especially is traditionally used for uh return values the e call is going to save to a zero whether you want it to or not so we can't really mess with that so we do lose a little bit of registers we have a limited amount of places to save things not on the stack on the stack we have as much memory as your computer has so we have not really actually because it's split up but we have a we have a lot more space on the stack uh so when we run out 
on our registers, we got to start moving things to the stack. And that's really the whole thing with uh, saved and, uh, you know, Kali, caller, all that nonsense that you might be seeing out there. Okay, so let's get into Kali versus caller. What is that? So every procedure, and these are procedures, you see this little italicized word followed by a colon and a little block here. That's the procedure. Every procedure is either a Kali a caller or both all of these procedures or these two procedures these three procedures are callees and callers um well actually just these two so this procedure calls another procedure and it also gets called by a procedure so it is a caller and a callee so why do we care well we have a convention to use registers in a specific way depending on if depending on where they're getting used so some registers are saved registers and some registers are temporary registers as i said before or maybe i didn't uh, this is just a convention uh, we, we follow conventions so people can read the code better if we want to move the code somewhere else it can fit in more nicely and most importantly ai can debug the code more effectively if we follow the conventions we can use a smaller context window and not have to explain as much if we use the conventions that have already been set aside so that's really why you want to use conventions you don't have to do as much explaining maybe to a human maybe to a computer the context window of information to explain your program is going to be significantly reduced if you follow these conventions but you don't have to so you really don't have to do this and if you've already done assembly you're going to be like hey i've never done any of this before and it works fine it's just a convention that being said though the main idea is to be able to save the values of these registers somewhere so that you can reuse the registers and have the registers values be preserved that's really the main idea that's all we're trying to do we just want to be able to use this a0 register up here and we want to use it down here and be able to access this value and have two separate values values and be able to access both of them independently. So we have saved registers and temporary registers that split this up so that we can focus on saving some registers in a certain place in a certain way at a certain time and saving other registers in a different place in a different way at a different time. But at the end of the day, you can use either one for whatever you want to do. There's really no rules here except the X0 register is hardwired to always be zero. So let's break down this difference a little more. All right, so let's start with the temporary registers. Those are T0 to T6 officially and then the a0 to a7 again it's just a convention so i don't know if officially is uh but i guess it is officially it's in the documentation a0 to a7 are also can be used as temporaries but the are also used as return addresses the a0 especially you're probably not going to want to use as a temporary even though i am using it exclusively as a temporary in this uh in this code here but generally the a0 is uh where you're gonna uh get is where the e-call returns are saved if you are using e-calls but since it's a temporary uh, generally you don't really care about the value outside of the procedure so unless you're using an e-call inside of the temporary and then trying to reuse the uh, a0 register you're good to go and that's the whole point of temporaries they are not expected to be preserved outside of the procedure so you should really use temporaries when you don't want the values outside of the procedure you just want to do some calculations or do some functions save some addresses do something strictly within the procedure but if you do want to save these values outside of the procedure it's the responsibility of of the caller to save them so if i have some temporaries in here let's say i want to save this uh and in this case it's a little confusing because this else else f procedure is the caller uh for the factorial procedure for the fact procedure uh it's also a callee but um it, in this case we're going to be treating it as the caller if i want to save this a0 register i can do so i'll just save it to the stack and how do i do that i move the stack pointer down or move it up depending on how you're looking at it uh, set aside eight bytes because I'm going to save two values and each value is a four bit byte word. That's what the S, that's what the W here means. Word, the words are four bytes and um, we are saving two values. The return address we're going to save. Generally, you always want to save that if you're uh, setting stuff aside and jumping from procedure to procedure and the A0 value we're also going to save. So we're going to save those values onto the stack on memory and then this value is free to be used for whatever we want it to be used for. And then once we're done using it, we're going to load it back in. So we're going to load the uh, return address that we had here back here. And this return address is not going to be the same anymore. We're going to, this return address is actually going to uh, be handled with the uh, fact and it's going to be a different value, but then we can uh, load it back in here and use the original return address on this instruction here. So we're going to have two different values and we can use them both on one single register. Same with the A0. We are going to use the A0 uh, somewhere and we're going to load it back in here and we're going to have a different value in here presumably but it doesn't actually look like we are but we could 
if we wanted to. Uh, maybe up here, we're going to actually set it to one. So we're going to set it to one up here, uh, but it's not one in here necessarily. It might be, but it's not necessarily. So these temporary registers, we're going to be using them uh, more than the temporary scope they were designed for. So we're going to have to save them to the stack and load them to the stack. And it's going to be pretty similar for the save registers. So let's take a look at that. Uh, upon further review, that was a lot of garbledy gook. The main idea is if you have a register and you want to use it again, but you want to keep the value that was in the register, you have two options. You can either save that value to a new register, or you can save that value to the stack. It's going to be easier and save you, well, I don't know about easier, but if you save it to the stack, you have more registers available. If you save it to a new register, you have the same amount of registers available and potentially you're running out of registers. So you save it to the stack. It doesn't cost that much in terms of time, but it does cost a little bit. So you do want to limit the amount of stuff you save to the stack, but you also want to limit the amount of registers you're using so that you have registers available for future use. Pretty, pretty simple. Let's get back into the save registers. It's really the same thing. We'll go ahead and look at this program, which is a little bit different. And we have a procedure here that is saving these saved registers and using them subsequently. So let's, uh, let's see what's going on here. Oh, all right. So when using saved registers, the S0 to the S11, 12 in total, we are expecting them to be preserved after the procedure call. So we expect that the registers that we use that are designated as saved registers have the same value before and after a procedure is called. So the way we do that is if a procedure is using these saved registers and the caller is also using these saved registers, we want the procedure that's using the saved registers to save the values that are currently in the saved register to the stack and load them back into the register before and after it's being used. So we want to save before it's used and then load them back in after it's used so that uh, the procedure outside of the procedure that's being called uh, notices no change. Um, so here we are saving the uh, return address, uh, which in this case we want to be the same uh, in the beginning and in the end because we're only returning here once, but we do change the return address in here uh, so that we can return back to this code here. Um, this stack code is called by the main, so it is a little more complicated as to where the return address is going, but the idea is basically the same. The S0 and the S1 have values that were set in the main, and we want to preserve those uh, before and after the uh, we want to preserve those throughout the subsequent procedure calls even though we do end up using them uh, in this procedure so this is the callee and we're having the callee save these values to the stack and load them back into the original places that they were uh, this is another callee but this callee is called by this callee and uh, doesn't is technically you could think of it as being inside this uh, callee here so that's really the that's really it uh, for the saved registers since we expect them to be used before and after a procedure, we want to save them in the sub procedure or subroutine or callee procedure that is using them. And we want to load them back into the original places. So when you save to the stack, you're taking the value in the register and you're putting it on the stack. And when you load from the stack, taking the value on the stack and putting it into the register. And that's it. If you're using a temporary register and you want to keep that value preserved before and after a procedure, you want to save that before it gets used in the procedure and load it after it gets used by the procedure. Pretty simple. Uh, you expect that the value of the temporary is going to get changed in the procedure, so you save it before the procedure. You expect that the, uh, you don't expect the saved registers to get changed by the procedure, so if it is getting changed by the procedure, you want to save it in the procedure. That's really all there is to it. Um, it's not, I hope that explanation kind of makes sense. It took me damn near two weeks to wrap my head around it. And uh, even now, I think it's simple uh, to say it and to kind of do uh, some sort of coding with it. But I'm not sure if the explanation is uh, is something that you can just listen to one time and be like, all right, I got it. Uh, and it, But if you can, then like and subscribe, comment, and, and I hope you come back because I'll be explaining more things as I learn them in a way that I can understand and hopefully other people can understand uh, for, for the greater good of, of all of us, really. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's good to break things down so I can come back and, uh, and revisit. So that's, that's pretty much all I got for uh, procedures, um, really two kinds of procedures, two kinds of registers that procedures use and um that's that's pretty much it for today so i hope that was enough hope you guys have a fantastic friday i hope the weather's good where you are and i hope that you feel fantastic and are fantastic peace